Look, it happened. I depowered the main almost completely. You can see it's almost straight with the wind. I also depowered the Genoa. It just doesn't feel nice. But yeah, we are actually reefed for this, so we're not we're not too bad off, but yeah, the gust is coming up all the way to 30 knots. And that we had a long time ago, <laughs> 30 knots of wind while we're sailing. Everything looks okay. Wow, <laughs> that was quick and I even had to drop this, but you can see not completely done correctly. Yeah. We are two crazies from South Africa, that's Frick and Pietru. We decided to chuck it all and we are now living and sailing full time on our new home, Sisu. Okay, that was now super hectic. Uh, some of it is already past us. And sorry for the wind noise, but some people want to know a storm. And we just went through a storm. You can see the sea is still not happy and we are literally hundreds or maybe 200 meters from the coastline. So this is already big ways for this little distance. And then I had to depower the main almost completely. I will now start powering it up. I think we threw the storm. But and the Genova is like very, very deeply reefed as well. I think at this moment we're only sailing with the Genoa and yeah you cannot see through there but we're doing eight knots at this moment and this is this is the sea state and I had to drop this thing and it was chaos <laughs> oh. but yeah we went through that one over there it was a lot of a lot of wind we had up to 32 knots of wind but now it's getting calm again it's now only 20 knots <laughs> okay so we're now inside here this is what we have here um, 20 knots of true wind but i need to look at the apparent wind over there so that we can know what to read. But I think it's time for the main to come back to power up again. And I don't think that storm is going to go in. Oh, water over the bow. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to power up the main a little bit. Hold on, hold my dear. Okay, so I'm just going to wind in a little bit. Maybe I can, I can do it like this. And then you will see how the main the shape is changing. So it's already a little bit more power tap. And our speed is already, wow, more water over the bow. <laughs> yeah. I think I can maybe Power it up a little bit more. Just bring this one, this one in. So we can bring the boom a little bit down. And now you can see this shape. Not there's not much laughing going on in the sail itself. So although the top is still twisted a lot. But now the most, the big part at the bottom is getting the wind. And just like that, we're doing 8.7 knots. And the wind speed did not change much. But yeah, look at the apparent wind. That is the one that we need to look at. Also look at the rudder control. And the general healing. Now cat, <laughs> we're not used to heal, but we do. I think we can do six degrees in 30 knots of wind. So 
So while we're in a topic, some people may say, why don't we drop the sails in a storm? And the thing is, our engines are way underpowered for big seas and big sea sites. And we, we had it once that we had the engines almost full power, uh, like 2,500 revs, and it's, it's the, the temperatures were just climbing, and they don't like that to be that high. And we barely made two knots in heavy winds and heavy seas, so the engines doesn't work that well. So you have to have sails up, at least a little bit of sails or depowered sails, whatever, but you, if you have sails, you can control the direction you're going, and you can also control the speed um, by depowering them or powering up again and so on. But at least have a smaller bit of sails out, doesn't matter the weather conditions. So many people want to drop the sails, but at least for the Leopard 45s, the engines is not enough. Oof. Now we're going to go into a, a pretty big shaky roll, oh, and it stopped. <laughs> as I showed you. Yeah, so for the Leopard 45's engines are underpowered for heavy weather. I mean they are called auxiliary engines. They are not our main engines <laughs> for a reason. And, okay. and, and if you undersail you go faster so you get out the storm quicker. Oh. <laughs> so there is a light at the end of that tunnel. Uh, there's, a, there's a silver, what do you call it? Silver lining. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, so when there's that, yeah, you look at this. At this speed, we went through this very quickly. The true wind speed already dropped now quite dramatically <laughs> from, from 30 to 15. So I think I'm going to power up the main more. And we will get to Georgetown in a jiffy. Okay, all is back to normal. It was not even five minutes got our fishing lines out the mine is powered up again still on reef one and the Genoa is fully out so we are sailing nicely in 10 knots of wind doing around six knots and look at this the sea is all of a sudden quiet again <laughs> and I think over here yeah, right there is Blowhole Beach. Very nice place to anchor. And that is Lee Stocking Island. So we went past Lee Stocking Island at a very fast pace. Now there's somewhere, when we came out of our anchorages, there was a little mono. But I don't see the mono anymore. And the mono was also sailing. Yeah, don't see the mono. Huh. And there's a couple of fishermen out over there. I think they're catching fish on the. Oh wow, they got big outriggers. But that's the only boat I see. Huh. I hope the mono is alright. Now, oh. Pietro. <coughs> <laughs> so Pietro is busy working on videos again. I think she needs to create a thumbnail. See, that's always a dreaded thing. What yeah. should the thumbnail be? Uh. What thumbnail draws your attention? Yeah. Now, comment down below, what thumbnails do you think should we do? <laughs> because we cannot do bikini shots, right? And abs, look at my abs, I've got a six pack, there's a six pack of beer inside. But, what is, what is a attention grabber for a sailing channel? Besides bikinis. <laughs> we just now refilled, uh, well not really refilled, we Got some, they only had 100 gallons. Not even sure how many liters that is, but um, so we, we, we managed to get our tanks a little bit top. It's not topped up, so we still need some fuel, which we'll do later. And the wind 
is is either nine knots or 20 knots so no main now only the genoa and we're doing 6.4 knots <laughs> oh man you can see when there's no wind and then all these white things rush to us yeah you might have also now a lot of wind noise <laughs> i'll try and put the thing over the mic a hand okay but this is we're on our way to georgetown now so i think we will do this route one more time to to top up before we leave the bahamas but we are not doing too bad already 44 minutes on hold and this is our third call already since we found that the flight was delayed and there is just nothing happening Peter is busy packing in mm -hmm. and, the, and the noise that you hear from the phone is Peter is waiting for for the airline because uh, apparently the flight was postponed or something delayed by 12 hours. So on a connection flight, guess what? It's less than 12 hours. So we are busy motoring. We just left Georgetown. So Georgetown is somewhere there. And there's no wind. Oh, and there's no wind. Lots of rain in the air and there's some rain over there so we need to ooh, I need to be at the helm ooh, 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 ooh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so it's chaos out here we just filled with fuel our tanks are smack full and full because Petro is flying tomorrow, we're supposed to fly from here and so we went like two hours that way to fill up with diesel and come back two hours because the flight is here of, of motoring and now we're going to motor past the uh, fuel docks and then all the way to Stanoki. So her last, last night in Bahamas is going to be night shifts. Life can throw curveballs at you. And she, have, she has to see her mom. But yeah, this is our view. Instead of having a nice glass of wine together, we will be sleeping in the same bed, but not together. And as it looks now, I've got both engines on, burning quite a lot of a lot of fuel. Um, I'm actually checking also the temperature there, but 
we need to go all the way all the way all the way and then around 10 o'clock we will go through this notoriously small cut it looks like we will be here at high tide then we need to go through there through there and I, I actually have made a video where we said this is our last time that we're going through here <laughs> guess what and then we have to go inside all the way to Staniel Key of course we can stay on the outside but this one we will have we will catch this one at full full flow full tide um, so I'm not sure I want to, to risk that and you have to come this whole little route here at night and then somewhere find you can see our previous anchor spots we need to find an anchor spot and if there's a lot of boats so I was I'm I opted to come on the on the inside um, and then go to our anchor spot from here and the reason is that on this cut here we will hopefully reach it at high water so I named that one called cut you can see cut so if you look at our routes navigation route plan you can see cut we will be there around 12 o'clock and if I looked at the tides then it would be also the high tide will be around 12 o'clock of course the tide markers is <laughs> way not on the same spot so we always have an hour or two well, not two hours but an hour or so variations between the different tides so that one is better to catch at high tide and it will be close to slack tide so I would rather then go through the, the islands and then stay on the inside but yeah, so it looks like tomorrow morning we will arrive there around 4 o'clock so around 4 o'clock and she has to be at the airport at 5 so it's going to be oh man it's going to be tough and that's if we can keep up with the speed and there goes Pietro <laughs> on his little airplane so from now on it will be just be me and Sisu